Hey guys, it's Jesse and Jackie from Fit Tribe. Hey guys. So we've got a complete follow along workout for you today. This workout involves one piece of equipment, a kettlebell. Now there's some ways you can substitute a dumbbell in for these exercises, but ideally you'd have a kettlebell. Uh, this kettlebell that Jackie's gonna use is 16 kilograms, about 35 pounds. You could adjust that for your level of strength, but she's gonna do 10 repetitions of most, most of these exercises. So she wants to choose a weight that's challenging for her as she goes through these rounds. So the way she's gonna do it is two exercises back to back. She'll have 30 seconds to rest. She'll do a cardio and core move. Rest again for 30 seconds. Two exercises back to back. Rest for 30 seconds and then repeat the cycle. The exercises are gonna be kettlebell swings, bent over, alternating rows. She's gonna rest, then do mountain climbers. Rest after that, goblet squats, push-ups, then she'll rest again. We're gonna go through for five rounds. All right, guys, you ready? Yeah. All right, first move is a kettlebell swing. This is all in her hips. She's pushing her hips back and coming forward. It's like a height pass and a broad jump, as our friend Jim would say. And she's locking her glutes up top. It's powerful. She's not pulling the kettlebell up with her hands either. She's using her, her, her glutes and her hamstrings to pull that kettlebell up. Now she's gonna go to her rows. 10 total rows. It's a heavy weight. You want it to be challenging. You'll get a lot more out of doing 10 total rows like this than you would out of doing you know, 20 with a lighter weight. You want the most results in the least amount of time. That's what's gonna do that for you. Don't worry, it's not gonna turn you big and bulky like a bodybuilder, Jackie sure is. Now she's resting. So we're gonna take about 30 seconds of rest. Normally, Jackie would probably use a slightly heavier weight or take less rest, but we want you to be able to follow along at home and you can adjust here. If you wanna use, if you wanna take a little less rest, that would be okay. If you wanna take a little more rest, that's okay. You've gotta scale it for your fitness level where you, wherever you are right now. As long as you're following along and doing the exercises, you're already ahead of the game. So we've got, Time to get into your position, you got three seconds. And go with the mountain climbers. So notice, she's keeping her butt down, her core's tight, she's flipping from side to side. This is using both her core, her legs, and her obliques. All right, you done? Yeah. Okay, that was quick. So right, now we're going from there to goblet squats. So you're gonna rest a little bit. You wanna hold that for 30 seconds? <laughs> so we're gonna give it a minute. Jackie's an energizing bunny, she would love to keep going. but. Uh, for everyone at home, I want you to make sure your form's right, and I want you to work really hard during the exercises. So I think taking a little bit of rest makes sense. I see some of these workout videos where there's no rest, and that's, for, for most people, that's just not realistic. And even for people that could get away without taking rest, they probably should take rest and use a heavier weight to get better results. And we're going to goblet squats now. And we're going down there, just sitting all the way down and driving off her heels. Very good. Now I can put my fingers under here, and I'm not getting my fingers crushed because her weight's on her heels, she's pushing her hips back, she's keeping her chest up. That's how a squat's done correctly. If we saw her weight transferring onto her toes or her knees jutting out, it's very bad news for a bunch of parts of the body, particularly the knees. All right, from there, she's gonna go directly into push-ups with no rest. So shoulder blades are together, core's tight. Notice her hips aren't sagging down, her butt's not sticking up, she's under control. She's looking straight down. A lot of people tend to tuck their heads in when they do a push-up. That's very bad news. You don't want to do that. You'd rather see your head up than your head down. Very good. Ten reps. All right. So we're going to rest about 30 seconds. We're going to repeat again. One round down, guys. Back going back to kettlebell swings. We're doing five rounds today. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> very excited to get this going. I understand. <laughs> I want everyone home to take a second of rest right now before we so, we've got about five seconds to go. You can get set up. And back on. 10, nine, eight. She's locking her glutes at the top. And she's swinging. She's not pulling up with her arms. This is not to work your shoulders. Also, you'll see some, you may see pictures of people doing kettlebell swings over their head. Please, I beg you not to do that. It's murder on the shoulders. We want to get results, not injury. Now she's going to row. Again, back staying flat. She's hinged over the hips and rowing up. The more she comes up, the less she's getting out of it. You want to come down as far as you can without rounding your back over. Keep hinged over. Keep it tight. There you go. Nice job. 
All right, from there, so go to our cross body mountain climbers. Again, with the cross body mountain climbers, it's a core exercise as well as cardio. So you want to keep your butt down, core stays nice and tight, and that rotational motion is going to get your obliques in there as well. And halfway through your rest. And get into a plank position. And we're up in three, two, and let's go. There you go. Now, feel free if you want to add more of these in. I'm sure if Jackie, if I let her go, she probably would have done 40. If you want to do more, you can. But we want, to, we want this to be scalable for all fitness levels. You don't have to be an athlete to follow along with our workouts. Next is going to be goblet squats. And I'm going to reset my timer, so we're going to call that about 30 seconds. Very good. Again, perfect form as always. The big exercises like this that use lots of muscles are the ones that are going to give you the best results. And she's sitting way down into her squat. That's because she's got great mobility and great core stability. Some people, when they get low, their hips will sink under. That means you can't squat that low. So you may hear people say, push ups. And go ahead, 10, 9. You hear people say to go all the way down, um, all the way to the bottom when you squat. If you don't have the mobility to do that without discomfort in your back, you don't need to go all the way down. Just about 90 degrees is fine. Very good. All right. Set ourselves a timer again and move on to round three. Sorry to feel it. Push up. Push up. Weakness. Everybody's got your weak spots, and those are the parts you want to work on. We all have a tendency to do what we're good at. You know, I, I, I'm the same way. You want to make sure you work on those weak spots and bring those up. You know, a balanced body is what we're looking for in balanced fitness. All right. So it's time to grab that kettlebell. And we're up in now. Lock those glutes out, drive those hips forward. And notice she's not leaning back at the end. She's just hinging and standing up. Very good. Now depending on the weight of your kettlebell, you may do more or less reps. But I urge you, if you find yourself being able to do 20 repetitions, time to get a heavier kettlebell. Feel free to shoot us a message on Facebook. We'll gladly tell you the best places to buy a kettlebell and get a good price. The nice thing, it's one of the most versatile pieces of equipment you have access to. I mean, with this kettlebell, there's no part of the body you can't train. It's really great. And you know, dumbbells are a little more challenging to use as a cardiovascular cardio piece of equipment. This can, a kettlebell, the right weights can be used for cardio or strength. It's really convenient like that. And we're going to start up in five, four, three, two, and just back after it. Core stays tight. Again, this is one you can adjust. If you're gassed, take a, you know, to just do 20. You got a whole lot of energy and you, you can go ahead and do some more. All right, so going from there, back to kettlebell swings. This is, I'm sorry, goblet squats. Thank you for keeping me on track. And now you get some time. Some time. And notice when she's doing her squats, you know, from this angle you can see she's coming down right about here, right back up off her heels. She's not leaning forward. And you're up now. Fix it up, hold that kettlebell tight to the body. The further you hold it out here, the more stress on your low back, which you do not want. You know, the big fad today is extreme crazy workouts. And I urge you not to get caught up in that because if you're injured, you can't work out. So you'll constantly be taking two steps forward and two steps back. Let's just keep you moving and progressing in a steady pace. From there into push-ups, Jackie's favorite. 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. 
One. Great job. All right. Time for round four. Hope you're hanging in there at home. If you need to pause this or speed up a little bit and do a couple more, that's cool as well. So make sure you've got the, the, the right form. If you've got the right form, just increase that weight a little bit to make it more challenging so you need the rest. You know, if Jackie had her weight, she'd probably use a heavier kettlebell for a lot of these exercises, and she probably wouldn't do the push-ups. <laughs> nah, she always does push-ups. And you're back up again. There you go. Kettlebell swings is an amazing exercise. It works so much of the body. It's cardiovascular and strength, and it's a very functional movement. You know, it's a movement we all need to, to learn how to properly hinge our hips to do so many exercises. In fact, even now, in order to do this without putting her back at risk, she's got to hinge her hips. Very good, keep on switching. And then, during the break here, I'd like you to show these guys a side angle of everyone at home of what rounding your back looks like versus hinging your hips. So now notice her back is rounded all, don't round up the weight. Now, now go to a hip hinge, chest up. Flat back, that's what we're looking for. I didn't hit the timer there, so we're gonna kind of guesstimate. If you've got crossbody mountain climbers coming up, we'll give it about 10 more seconds. And you know what, let's give it a little more challenge. Let's do 40 this round. And go, let's get right to it. So she's gonna push a little harder on these, keep her back down, butt tight. Form does not change, still keeps it way under control. She's going to 40 this time because you know, she seemed a little bored, so what the heck. Let's make it more challenging. All right, timer's on. We're gonna go to goblet squats. Now you may find that in the beginning, you need a little less rest, and the end you need a little more, and that's fine. You know, you, know, you, you can go with that. You don't need to, don't get yourself hurt, because again, we wanna keep you working out. You know, you don't wanna take out those two steps forward, two steps back I was talking about. And it's time, we're up in five seconds. And back after it, go. Again, like the kettlebell swing, this is one of those movements that works a lot of muscles. But now, different from the kettlebell swing, this is a knee dominant exercise. So she, it does have a lot of knee flexion. She's bending her knees as she sits back into it. Whereas with the kettlebell swing, it's mostly happening in the hips. From there, on to push ups. 10 of these, core is nice and tight. Holding a tight plank and then going into your push-ups. She doesn't have her butt in the air. Show that. She's not doing that. She's not letting her butt sink down. Like that. She's keeping her core nice and tight. And very good. Oh, that's good. Ah, that's, that seems about right to me. <laughs> All right. So this is our last round, I believe. Uh -huh. All right. So this time, Jack is gonna do 50 crossbody mountain climbers. So feel free, if you're feeling good and you've been having a good workout, you're not dying, you can up it as well. We're also gonna cut the rest down a little bit during this one. We're gonna go to 15 second rest periods. If you still need 30 seconds, that's fine. I'm gonna crank Jackie up, you can adjust it as you need to. And let's go, kettlebell swings. Very good. We've posted videos before on how to do a kettlebell swing, which you may want to watch. Even if you've been, you've been instructed somewhere else in a big group kettlebell class, I still think it's a good idea to look at it, because if you're not, you're not being shown the proper way to do a kettlebell swing, a very, very functional movement that can really show you a lot of results could end up getting you injured. So that's obviously not the goal. All right, so 15 seconds, and we go into our 50 cross body mountain climbers this time. And we've got about five seconds. We'll get into a plank position. Hit it. Core is tight, butt's now. She's not shooting your butt up in the air. She's not even tapping her feet up front. It's, you, don't want, you don't need your feet to touch the ground up front. Doing that in fact makes you more likely to round your back off, more likely to cause an injury. So you want to keep your feet you're touching the ground in the back, but up front you're just pulling your knees in. Very good. So we're gonna go 15 seconds, and then we go into our goblet squat squats. 
This workout would be great to pair with, of course, you're going to start out with a warm-up, like the warm-up we've already posted, and any one of our finishers would be a great way to finish this workout. So you've got your warm-up, go. Your warm-up, your workout like you've done today, and your finisher. Those are all the kind of pieces of the puzzle that you should be able to get in no more than 30 seconds, 30 minutes, excuse me. Wouldn't it be great if it was 30 seconds? I've had to sell that product on TV. But no, no more than 30 minutes to get a great workout in. And I challenge that if you can't get a great workout in 30 seconds, you're not trying hard enough. 30 minutes, excuse me, I keep saying that. Uh, you're just not trying hard enough. You're not challenging yourself enough. There you go. Spectacular. Great job. That's how it's done. All right, Jack. All right, guys. So there you have it. So, of course, you want to start out with a warm-up, like the dynamic warm-up we've posted. A workout like this, and if you have time, adding in a finisher, and you've got an amazing workout in a very short period of time. It's not about how long you work out for. It's great intensity, great form, the proper exercises, and get being consistent about getting it done. Awesome, Jack. Thanks, guys.